Thank you. Welcome. Great to have you back here for the regional economic press briefing. This morning, we're going to focus on economic conditions in our region, uh, giving particular attention to the kinds of jobs that have been created in New York, northern New Jersey, and Puerto Rico during the recovery from the Great Recession. As always, what I have to say reflects my own views and not necessarily those of the Federal Reserve or the Federal Open Market Committee. While the New York Fed has broad operating responsibilities on behalf of the FOMC and the Federal Reserve System, we're also deeply committed to the region. Uh, this commitment, I think, manifests itself in several ways. We produce monthly indices, for example, of economic activity that enable us to gauge performance of the region's economy. We conduct a regular poll of small businesses in our region, and just last week we hope it ho hosted a summit uh, examining new sources of credit for small businesses. We developed block by block flood maps uh, after so Superstorm Sandy to inform residents and businesses in Brooklyn of their vulnerability to future storms. And we work with the area schools to improve students' understanding of monetary policy, the Fed, and economics. It's also important to me that I, I visit different parts of our district on a regular basis and talk uh, directly with the people who live and work here. For example, last fall I visited Western New York and saw the many positive changes that are going on there that have helped re revitalize what's been a, a, a slow-growing economy for some time. And earlier this year I met with companies on a visit to Brooklyn and observed some of the new high-tech jobs that are being brought to the city, uh, which is, a, I think, a good pr precursor to today's presentation. But while in Brooklyn, I also visited Brownsville, which is a neighborhood which underscores the reality of the challenges that many face and the fact that the economy is not improving for everyone. Later this year, I have similar trips planned to Puerto Rico, uh, the Bronx, and Albany. I think these trips are useful because I, we do get on-the-ground intelligence, and it's valuable uh, in shaping my views of the region, the economy, and that ultimately informs my outlook on, on policy. Now, as you know, the district we cover is quite diverse. It's not just a single regional economy. It's really a collection of many different local economies. So let me talk a bit about how the different parts of our region are, are doing. Since our last briefing in November, the economic recovery has been variable uh, across the region, strong in some places, weaker in others. Let me begin with the area that struggled the most, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico's economy has unfortunately been in a deep economic slump that's lasted for nearly a decade now. Over the past few years, public sector job loss has have continued to weigh against moderate job gains in the island's private economy. And the ongoing difficulties in the island's labor market continue with the labor force participation still alarmingly low and unemployment stubbornly high at a rate well above that on the mainland. The good news is we're finally starting to see some glimmers of firming in economic conditions on the island. At the other end of the spectrum, New York City has been actually experiencing a robust recovery. While the Great Recession was clearly the worst post-war downturn in U.S. history, that wasn't the case for New York City. New York City was not as badly affected as the rest of the country. Just to give you some benchmarks, as of April, almost five years after the end of the recession, the, re the country as a whole has recovered nearly all the jobs lost uh, during the Great Recession. By contrast, New York City reached that milestone more than two years ago. And as we've highlighted in previous press briefs, this is particularly impressive because this re rebound occurred despite any significant uh, recovery employment uh, on Wall Street. Elsewhere, the recovery has generally progressed at a more moderate place, pace uh, elsewhere in the region. Consistent with historical patterns, upstate New York as a whole has been growing modestly, with Buffalo and Rochester doing a little bit better than uh, their other uh, upstate peers. Binghamton, on the other hand, has been really struggling with no signs yet of a meaningful recovery. Meanwhile, northern New Jersey's economy has been growing f f fairly steadily up until this past winter when activity did soften. That's probably due, at least in part, to the unseasonably harsh winter weather. Now that spring is finally upon us, we hope to see that economic conditions will improve more significantly. So let me now turn to the topic of today's press briefing, how the types of jobs in the region have changed over the last business cycle. Firms often change the way they utilize workers and the mix of skills they employ during recessions and recovering. The weakening demand that occurs during recessions forces firms to look for new ways to be more efficient, to cope with hard times. And, but these adjustments do not affect all workers equally. 
Indeed, it's what we typically think of as middle-skilled workers, for example, construction workers, machine operators, administrative support personnel that are hardest hit during recessions. Further, a feature of the Great Recession, and indeed the two prior recessions preceding it, is that the middle-skilled jobs that were lost don't all come back during the recoveries that follow. Instead, job properties tend to shift more towards higher and lower-skilled workers. As we'll show, these same, same trends have played out in our region uh, following the Great Recession. While there's been a good number of both higher skilled and lower skilled jobs created in the region during the recovery, opportunities for middle skilled workers have continued to shrink. I believe it's important for us to highlight these job trends and to understand what the implications of these trends are for our region. There have been significant and long lasting changes to the nature of work. As a result, many middle-skilled workers displaced during the recession are unlikely to find that their old jobs will come back. Furthermore, workers are increasingly facing higher skill requirements in order to land a good job. These dynamics in the labor market present a host of challenges for the, for the region to address. However, I think one thing is, is very clear. Workers will need more education, training, and skills to take full advantages of the job opportunities being created in our region. And that also applies for the country as a whole. So it's important that we work together to find ways to help people in our region to adjust to these changes. I'm now going to turn to Jason Abel to provide an update of economic conditions in our region.